I wanted to do a video around Dr. Octorex player for a while now. Uh, old school re reason users will probably remember it as being the uh, Dr. Rex player originally in reason. Um, mainly focusing really about samples and how you, you know, you're best off not just using them out the box. So trying to put your own mark and your own stamp on that sample so it doesn't sound like other people's samples who've bought maybe the same packs as you. So obviously in Reason that's that's pretty easy to do with uh, some of the functionality baked into the Dr. Octorex player. So what I wanted to do was just create two files really. Pretty simple. I think there's uh, five Dr. Octorex players in here just with some percussion bass, a couple of synth and some vocals. And uh, I've loaded in uh, some sample packs, Rex files from packs that I've bought over over time. I wanted to do a sort of like before and after, so a dry and wet look at what you can do using Dr. Octorex uh, to change those samples a little bit so they don't sound so out the box like other people are using them maybe. So Rex is a proprietary format, audio file format uh, developed by what were propeller heads for Reason Studios. Um, they're basically loops and people who remember probably still use it actually recycle creating those slices of a loop uh, you know being able to uh, play those back um, inside something like Dr. Octorex and, and, and as you're going to see here manipulate some of those slices to sound different okay so as I say, this rack here is just literally thrown out the box. I've not put any EQ, any effects on any of these things, so they're just as they sound coming out the box. But this is the original loop, what it sounds like. <laughs> okay, so somebody else who's got that pack, can't remember if they're all from the same pack, they might be from a combination, but chances are somebody could throw together very similar sounds come up with a um, track that sounds similar to your own so uh, I think it's important when you're using these stock samples that you put your own mark on those things uh, and I'm going to show you how you can do that now So here's a wet version of the samples that you've just heard. So this is where I've selected exactly the same loops that you heard in the first clip. But I've used some of the features inside the Dr. Octorex to manipulate them a little, to put my own stamp on them. And there's, there's lots of things you can do here, of course, in Reason by using insert effects to change the sound. But there's some quite powerful features baked into here that you can use without even touching any of those. So I'm just going to play this clip so you can hear a difference. So these are exactly the same samples that we used in the first clip. <laughs> further than I would in terms of reversing them and, and cutting them up, chopping them a little bit, but you get the idea how you can uh, make changes to those sounds to put your own stamp on it rather than using the samples out of the box. So let's uh, let's take a look here at the Dr. Octorex player. So kind of working from top left down to bottom right, 
we're not going to cover everything we'll just cover some of the features that are important for manipulating some of these rex loops and the slicers within them so you've got the pitch wheel at the top followed by the mod wheel and again you can stick some automation on these so in terms of the whole sample you could mess around with the pitch uh, to manipulate that uh, as you uh, are recording that but that would make changes to the whole you know the whole loop as you as you're manipulating the pitch what we're going to do here is we're going to make changes to some of the individual slicers within inside that loop so the Dr. Octo Rex obviously has got eight positions here where you can load in different samples as you do the um, load here you can choose from the stock library or from your own sample library some of them will load in individual uh, loops others will uh, fill all eight slots and the cool thing about this as I said is you can go and automate and record through the different uh, eight positions to create your groove uh, through a series of loops rather than just one loop that's repeating some of the sample packs you get a nice spread of the you know the kick, the percussion, the high, the tops. You know, um, maybe some sort of acid line or something. But mm. you can you can get a decent uh, loop going with just these eight, eight blocks here. So um, obviously you can save a patch once you've made some of these tweaks to it here. Uh, recall it uh, with all those different settings that you're going to apply. So. Um, for those who have used Dr. Rex before, you can obviously enable it for playback mode here. So this is playing it just within that device. So this is the percussion loop that I've got. And there's some slight differences to this. You might hear a couple of the claps are pitched down a little. And at the end you'll hear it pitch up there briefly. So um, how's that happening then? So um, inside this uh, select and load slot, select loop and load slot here, there is a, uh, you can see the, the individual slices of this loop playing through, okay, just down to the right here there's this slice edit mode, if you enable this you'll see the, the system, the little system at the bottom beneath the slices changes, and this is where you start to get options where you can tweak some of the values in here, so you can see it currently I'm on pitch, can see you have pitched down a couple of the slices within that loop and then pitched it up at the end so if we do more of a dramatic pitch up and make it more of a deeper pitch down you can start to manipulate each of the individual slices within that loop um, you can transpose here you can just click on the keyboard to do that there and obviously you've got a control over the levels within this particular loop so carrying on along the bottom here you've got a pan so I can pan left and right particular section of slices within this loop Carrying on from the bottom, we've got the levels. So you can completely cut out a particular slice here. So if you take that out completely, so again, you're mixing up um, different from the original slices within that loop. We've got a decay option here. So you can decay elements of that slice as we move through it. Back in, so again, totally taken out there. Just slightly here, again. pop it back in. Reverse, you can see I'm actually reversing a particular part of that loop. And uh, if we if we stop this for a second, we go further down. There is a one of the synths that I put in here as that a good example of that. So here you can see these three at the beginning of the loop three here are actually playing in reverse okay so if we go back up to here the next one 
just reverse this frequency. So we're getting a cut on the frequencies there, you can see it cutting it out there. So Alt if you drag these out here from the selection that you've chosen it will play a different pattern essentially of the loop. So these are the things you can do inside uh, the Dr. Octorex outside of the section here. Obviously you can mess around with the pitch but this is will affect different parts of the slicer as well if you automate it. So in here you can make sure you're recording there you can actually capture those changes in the octave as you were recording or you could right click and do the automation. So there's a slight bit of automation on the last vocal there where I'm dropping down the octave uh, on the uh, vocal. So if you see here when I play this back, you can see it here, it drops down an octave and you can see the automation line that I've got down here that's causing that to happen. So that's the only thing that I'm doing. Uh, outside of the uh, slice edit mode but of course you could achieve the same thing inside the uh, slice edit mode as well of course by just changing dropping the pitch down um, here inside the pitch section so of course other things you can do in here of course is changing the, uh, the frequency here changing the frequency changing the level of that maybe altering the attack again just putting your own spin on that uh, sample really so it sounds different to what other people might be doing but of course you can as I said earlier, you can put insert effects on here. You know, we could start doing things with, um, you know, the uh, pulverizer to, to make changes to that sound as well. But I think making the changes inside the loop itself before you even start doing that again is going to put you in a good footing so that you're not just using the sample out the box, um, which I must admit uh, in the early days that's something I would do. Um, so you get more to grips with how these particular individual instruments work inside Reason. So just to, for those that haven't used the uh, Octorex too much, um, how do we get this into the sequencer? So of course while you're auditioning the sound you just, you know, you're looping it here and listening to the, uh, you're auditioning the sound before you're ready to lay it down. So just making sure the vocal uh, lane is selected in the sequence so we can right click on the Octorex and do copy loop to track and it will put that uh, into the sequencer lane and, and it will now play back. Bear in mind it's play, playing back there with the tweaks we've already set inside the uh, Dr. Octorex. Okay. You, could, you can leave this like this but you're going to get it playing it can sound loud so you normally would, would turn that off once you've copied it into the um, sequencer lane at the bottom so of course you can automate any of these dials in here so you can right click and create a, an automation lane so so like here I might want to automate the filter frequency so you see we get another automation lane down here so I can uh, 
use the arrow tool, draw in a automation box ready and then I can use the mouse here to actually fade in the filter frequency as that vocal I wanted to take a deeper dive into the um, outputs of individual slicers. So we were taking a look at slice edit mode here and one of the last sections in here was the out option. So what I'm going to do here is we've got a standard out the box loop from Reason Studios. And you may notice that the uh, final snare there uh, had a bit more impact and some reverb on it. So what you're able to do here is in, in slice uh, in slice edit mode. There's the the last option we've taken a look at. A few of these other ones is the is the out option here, and <clears throat> we know the number of these slices. So as you're you know working through each slicer. You can audition it by holding down ALT. So what I'm doing there is I'm just picking out the snares. And so if we take off slice edit mode we can look at again at the number of each slicer here. So this is the snare at 3 and then at 7 11 and 15. So if we look at slice 3 here, what you're able to do is output these to 1 and 2, 3 and 4, 5 and 6, and 7 and 8. Now if you look on the back of Dr. Octorex, you can output 1 and 2, 3 and 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. So what I'm doing, I'm outing those into a single line mixer here. So as I play this through, you should see snare 1 hit here, 2, 3 and then 4. Through the auxiliary here, I'm, I've got some reverb set up, just a uh, out the box or small room setting. But I'm applying that, you notice 1, 2 and 3 are all dialed right down. But I've dialed it up on the fourth one here. So as we play this so that I can put some more verb on change it so I can get a little bit more control over these individual slices if I want to enhance them in some way not entirely sure whether it's possible to automate any of these slices in here. I don't think there's any options here where you can automate um, the manipulation of that in real time. But if anybody knows if that's possible, then uh, please let me know in the comments below. Just one final tip here is, is when you've been manipulating some of these values in slice edit mode. So again we've got the uh, stop loop from Reason here, some drums. Let's say we were uh, messing around with the pitch here. And diving all over the place. If I wanted to put that back easily, it can be quite tricky if you try to do this manually to put them back in the position in the centre. You hold down control and windows if you're a windows user and just kind of slide along that line with the left mouse click it'll put that back to the default settings
down, down, down. down. 